want to show the push publishing feature, which is currently in version 2.3 of .CMS, released in beta functionality, but there's enough of it out for people to start using, and maybe it'll be useful to some of you guys. At minimum, th this can serve as a demonstration of, of what is coming. The plan would be in version 2.5 of .CMS to have it fully released, all the the remaining functionality in and of course a much more hard and, and stable version of push publishing out. But let's see what we can do with it here in 2.3. I locally have set up two different servers. One of them's on uh, this address here that ends in .79 and I'm logged in here running 2.3. I have a second one here running in Internet Explorer you could see that is his IP is on .58. Both of them are right now sitting on the remote publishing portlet or the remote publishing tool and what we first want to look at is how do you even configure the push publishing the nice thing is push publishing can be configured completely from the UI what I need to do is say in this case this is a server that can receive content from another one so I can click here I give it a name so I'm receiving content from the auth server in this case uh, what's his address it's gonna check to make sure that the person who sends me we, what we call these bundles this is the zipped up uh, content and files and things of that nature that get sent are you allowed to send to me and then there's an off token this could be a path to a file or we just put some some token in here from a security standpoint and of course is it enabled or not we see the same thing on the other end except he has a send to now he's also allowed to receive content from my other server if I wanted I can set them up to he, he pushes this one could push to the other one and the other one could push to this one in the cases I'm going to show you today I'm simply going to send from this server that I'm running here in Internet Explorer on dot five eight to the server that's uh, over on Chrome on on the uh, on the Mac now in this case and in this is an also a nice demonstration and that, that you see we're pushing even between operating systems in this case I'm even pushing between and uh, different databases. My server here on the Windows side that's an Internet Explorer is actually backed by MySQL and on the other side he's backed by Postgres. So you can see here my Windows server he is pushing to dot seven nine he's got the same auth key he knows the port that he sends to so that's how this is configured and wired together. Let's just look at a basic example. Let's go uh, here to content and we're going to create a new piece of content we're going to say test content and we're going to save and publish this content now here you can see my content is saved I can right click on him and do a remote publish when do I want to remote publish I'm going to publish now now it's actually going to publish when my computer goes to 11.49 it, it, the job ends up running every minute so we just stuck it in the queue and it runs every minute but let's take a look here if we go to remote publishing we could even click on the remote publishing tab and here you could see I have in my queue a remote publishing in fact now I even I can check the status and here you can see this one was just sent seconds ago we're gonna go look on the other side now to see if our content made it so you kind of have a queue concept and the status concept here now I'm gonna click on the content tab and what I'm looking for is is my test content here and it is this is great here's my test content there's what I put in a a a a so we were able to create a new piece of content and push it again these are two servers running different databases very very cool stuff okay let's take a little deeper example here just to kind of show a little bit more of this off what I'm gonna do is actually go and create a new host so we're gonna just start with a blank host and let's call this new host Okay, we don't have to fill out anything here. We're going to save and activate the new host. We're going to go here to the site browser. Again, we're on that Windows machine at this point. We're going to go to new host. We're going to right click and add a folder. 
we're going to say my folder. Great. Now we're going to right click and let's add a file. And let's find a file here of interest. We'll send these penguins over. And let's let's also add a page. We'll just select any template. It's not going to have all the assets and stuff for the template. In this case, we'll we'll just make a blank template. And we'll save and publish that template. We'll go back here. Actually, let's do this. Let's put a piece of content on the template. Okay, and we're going to save and publish. I'm now going to go back here. I'm going to right click on my host. I'm going to do a remote publish. Once again, we'll see at 1152, we'll see this appear on the other side. We could check our queue. We would see this bundle now in the queue. A couple points to, to mention here. The system is smart enough to figure out the dependencies. Had I created a new template, uh, and even a new container, and those didn't exist on the other end. It, when, I, when I bundle up the host, it gets the folder, the folder gets its pages and the file inside, and that page recognizes he uses a particular template, and he'll get that template. He, he bundles all of that and pushes it all to the other side. So let's go look at the other end at this point. Let's go to the site browser. Let's change hosts. Let's go to new host, that's great. That's my new host I created. My folder, there's my penguins. I go to my test page, there's my piece of content I put here, and none of this was here before. So this is just a small example. You could even, as you uh, create things, you could right click on a folder. You could see the remote publish button here. You can right click on these files, on the pages, just to inspect a little bit here you have a delete, you have a delete and publish, so you can schedule when it would destroy this content or page or folder on the other side, meaning at this time, maybe it's some campaign or marketing, you want to pull this off the public server. You can control that by even entering publish it on this date and remove it on this date. So you have a lot of power and a lot of flexibility here. Uh, there's a few other items that you could push. Of course, templates, containers work very much the same way. You could remote publish and remote delete structures. So you, you have that as well. It'll push their fields and things that belong to them. And then finally, you also have the categories. But well, the categories work a tiny bit different. They're a remote synchronization. Basically, take the entire category tree, move it, and sync the whole thing over. And again, so this is just a small demonstration of what push publishing can do, but we saw it pushed hosts and folders and pages and templates and content uh, in in. Well, we were able to just create content and move it. A few other things just to mention that you can do for those that are wondering. We now ship in the workflow scheme. And for those that are familiar with how workflows work, you create the actions, which are the buttons that the users see. You could, you even now have a remote publish sub action. So you can integrate this uh, right into the workflow where the user could get that but even if you're not using that as you saw in the content search manager we had the ability to right click and remote publish so very very cool provides a lot of functionality do keep in mind this remote publish link will not show up unless you actually have wired together valid endpoints. You need to actually have enabled web points, meaning why should we show you a link to remote publish if you have nowhere to actually send it to? And it, currently, it will send to all endpoints here. Just a few more notes. We have a, a list of things that we are scheduling. 2.5, again, is the final release for push publishing. That's what you're going to want to look for. 
And in that, there's a lot more being added. The ability to browse the system, for example, create a bundle and then browse the system and add this, add this, add this, add this. Now, uh, go ahead and publish it. We're going to create an easier ability to build that bundle, download it, and then upload it. We do have some of that now. You, you do have the ability to just come here and upload a bundle if you can get the zip. And in any bundle that's already been sent, you can click it here and download it. And this will deliver a zip file. But we're going to make that even easier to do moving forward, among some other niceties and ways of tracking and just getting smarter on what's been pushed and not been pushed and seeing audits and so forth of uh, just the history of that kind of stuff from the object base. I hope this is helpful. For everyone who's interested in push publishing moving forward with what's available now in 2.3 and uh, what's coming out soon in 2.5. Thank you.